Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1996 Japanese comedy Supermarket Woman. This is a film by director Junzo Itami. Itami is probably most well known in the international scene for his 1985 movie, Tampopo. Tampopo is a really is a great work. You should, if you've never seen it before, you should check it out. The Supermarket Woman stars Nobuko Miyamoto as a middle-aged woman who is enlisted to help a floundering uh, supermarket store rebuild itself, find its identity, and serve its customers. <laughs> so yeah, not the standard fare for narrative cinema. Certainly not the sort of stuff we get in American films, to be sure. So yeah, if that's got you interested or excited or curious, then let's check out Supermarket Woman. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. McAllen with spaghetti. Thrilling combination. Wasn't this an episode of Garfield and Friends? Did Garfield and Friends get their idea from this movie? <laughs> There was like an episode where a big time store came in that offered like lots of discounts and values and and savings, and they tried to run out a mom and pop store. They had that shit figured out back in the '90s. They were anticipating what Walmart would be doing to our collective class consciousness. <laughs> ハナコ。六年三組の。ほら。これ見てみな。どれどれ。神戸牛ステーキ五十パーセントオフって書いてあるけど。本当だ。元の値段高くて半額してある。a housewife knows. Ah, I see. To disguise that they're actually drably colored. I mean, the U.S. does that too. We've got food coloring and all sorts of stuff. Bro. This <laughs> アホだぜきっと。実はこれ僕の店なんだ。ああ。じゃあ、ヤスリ大門がオープンして大変なんだ。大変なんだよ。お前もヤスリで対抗しろよ。ヤスリ大門なんてあんなインチキな店に負けち
<laughs> yeah, you really see him butting ag up against this idea of corporatism, of mass consumption, a resistance to any sort of service or any sort of public arena that isn't about um, intimacy or human interaction. That's cute. This is a rom com. I believe this actress was a long time collaborator with uh, Itami as well. Yeah, his, this is his wife, um, no, no, Nobuko Miyamoto. This is a cute little collaboration. Like, we like to talk about, uh, you know, Bergman and Ullman, uh, Cassavetes and Rollins. There's some Asian power couples as well. Itami and uh, Miyamoto, also um, Chia Jonka and Tao, Tao Zhao. <laughs> <laughs> like Amazon, like Walmart, like ne like Netflix and Disney and all the rest. Where are our good, honest housewives fighting against this cruel oppressor? <laughs> she looks like she's seen a ghost. It's really about pleasure. That's a, that's, that's a really interesting take. Translating the um, the process of oh, translating the experience of <laughs> of shopping at a supermarket to um, attenuating to um, meeting the needs of a woman about the experience of pleasure and not about like making everything be uh, transactional or financial. <laughs> making the experience sensual, making the experience about uh, trust and affection. <laughs> Take it a stand. We all need we all need a housewife in our lives. Or we have to be the housewives of our own life. I love how exciting um, Itami's managed to make something that's like so, so ostensibly banal. I mean, something similar could be said of Tempopo, and it was part of why the film has such an appeal to it. The kind of like pedestrian, the everyday aspects of our lives is really given like fresh perspective. <laughs> so she has her first confederate, the first pro that actually sees the effect of what she's doing. What? This is really what it's like running at Costco. <laughs> I love the verb that's infused in these like regular day-to-day -day activities. 
This is kind of loaded, but it's like, I mean, I haven't worked in a supermarket, but when you work in the line in like service or whatever, it can get kind of crazy. And there's a, there's this tension in like um, wanting to serve the customers as best as possible and wanting to like represent their uh, feelings and wants and desires. And also like trying to maintain your sanity because there is also like a breaking point in terms of customer expectations, how much of it is like, um, rational or capable or within the realm of reality, how much of it is like learned behavior, how much of it can be coached through how the business or how the, the service presents itself and how to like manage within those expectations. And so in this instance, something that's a crisis it presents opportunity. I've definitely had that experience before too, where you like lay yourself on the line, you give everything of yourself, and some like the, some of the worst days are like your best experiences <laughs> working. They really can. Customers are really weird. You want to please them as much as possible, or at least I did in my experiences, but um, sometimes what they want is like trying to fill a hole that's way, way, way too big. Yeah. I've, I've had that experience being a customer where I've needed a service or an item or whatever to be more than what it is because it needs to fill something else in my life that is kind of impossible to fill. Yeah, and we see this repeated um, interaction. We see people who are working, who have become fixated on the job, the task itself, and kind of lose out on the expression of humanity. Yeah, yeah. These movies are pretty simple to understand. You just gotta have work to date in your life. It's true, it's true. I've felt this in my life. There's a certain point in that, um, in that production line where you encounter somebody who just doesn't care, will never care as much as you, and somebody on that line ends up spoiling it for everybody because they're the person who ends up taking advantage of everybody else. It's hard out there, man. It's hard out there. Ultimately, this narrative, the way it speaks to me, just because I watched another communist, <laughs> another socialist movie recently, uh, it's about how communities empower each other and how we shouldn't exploit each other unnecessarily. And these these pros that used to take pride in whatever they were taking pride in, taking pride in their abilities or taking pride in their uh, mastery, can now take pride in serving other people. It's a beautiful sense of it, it really is. Y'all don't understand if you've ever worked a service job. This is also a good inversion of the the principle I said earlier that a bad like a bad apple rots the um rots the bunch that a good apple can also have this kind of um positive influence but it takes a lot of bravery it takes a housewife to to move everybody to really reprioritize it's a beautiful beautiful sentiment beautiful movie about collective action 
about being passionate, about not falling into apathy. Housewives. Housewives. Keeping it all, keeping it all in the family, trying to represent the, the wants and needs of a family, trying to make everything about servicing a family. <laughs> this movie's great. I'm really touched. Really. Touched in a way that I wasn't expecting. It really is like a, a human story in the way that Tom Popo is like a sexual story, a story of agency. This is a story of like re... of like recognition, of like revisiting and realizing your own humanity. <laughs> He was definitely making this movie about making movies as well. I don't want to like try and read the meta uh, message and everything, but this is definitely he probably like butted up against some some union workers or something. <laughs> <laughs> so many movies um, right now or that I see people obsess over online are about like steadfastness about like the will of a of an individual and while I think that's like an important narrative to take at some points of your life um, what I really love to see in movies and I what I really want to express is like a joyful um, experience in watching movies is seeing cooperation and action when you get to see people two or more people actually understand each other and work together it's far greater rush of feeling than any individual's victory. <laughs> okay. Just take it slow, I guess. It's crazy that they could communicate so much to each other, that they could communicate so well. And then just some things, you know, there's just static. Human beings are complicated. I like that it presents that each department actually has its own challenges that, um, I don't know, like a, like an organization, like a lover, there's different things that have to be attended to that there's different needs that have to be met with each individual, with each with each department. But the idea that all the departments require attentiveness and care, and it's not just like a whole class solution that applies to all of them. I mean, there is overall like trying to get them to be passionate about things, but how it manifests is different for each individual. <laughs> There's so many organizational intricacies to this. It's a really kind of like an indictment on like Japanese society and Japanese uh, ways of doing things, but it's applicable, of course, to America as well. The idea that the uh, chief that the department chief feels like he has to do everything, everything has to be within his control, he can't trust his subordinates. The, uh, like, uh, the Japanese ideal of, like, um, you know, waiting 15 years before you can even start to become an apprentice, uh, um, or start handling the raw materials. There's just these, um, 
there's these things that are built out of tradition and built out of a way of doing things but uh when you like really break them down to their core elements they're based on hierarchy and they're based on um imposing a sense of import or a sense of authority where there wouldn't be otherwise they say it as soon as I say it. <laughs> I like agree conceptually, but also the idea of a assembly line being introduced as an innovation, as like a, the like new breaking free from the controls of the old, is like really setting off my American alarms. See, this I would feel is like a concession. It's certainly a concession for the pros. It's really interesting because, like, you, you can definitely see it from, like, Hanako's side, but from the chief's side, it's also, like, it's not even about livelihood, it's about, like, his own identity. Once again, it's not about, like, what's best for business exactly, although that's the end goal. Really, it's about meeting human demands, about hearing who he is as a human being and trying to respond to that. And he has this pride about wanting to like sell Kobe beef. It's about not making everything frou frou. It's not uh, not making anything that like. Oh my god, this is, this is gonna make me fucking question my own fucking YouTube channel. Not making everything just to serve the ego of the department heads, but trying to serve the needs of the people. I started a fucking YouTube channel to avoid the, these kind of fucking issues. God damn it. This motherfucker, he doesn't even care about any of this shit. He knows that the Kobe beef won't sell, so if he can get it to resell in a gray market or a secondary market, he gets to pocket the difference. This motherfucker. What the fuck? What an asshole. I'm pulling for the fish guy, but this, this guy, fuck. And now he's repackaging fucking loins. You can actually tell the marbling's different between the different slices. That's weird. That's that's attention to detail. I think something that they have to recognize is that the a proposition that's being given to them by uh, value galore is just to like buy them out to weaken honest Goro. Like they don't actually care about their um, mastery or their adeptness. They ju they're just u using them as pawns to destroy their competition. Um, and so you have to recognize when an institution cares about you for your position or for your stake or if it's like a person a real person who cares about what you are who you are and what you have to offer it's actually really complicated it's it's utilized the uh supermarket really well as like a metaphor for observing different aspects of <laughs> different aspects of corruption and and institutional rot in Japan overall and it turns out to be really translatable to American values and American issues because wouldn't you know it American and Western values have kind of insinuated themselves into Japan during this time not to say that Japan wouldn't have these problems in the absence of uh, America or the West but it's, they've certainly been exacerbated by the influence of capital and by the influence of Western culture. <laughs> She's going to stop him using the, uh, the trolleys. A metaphor for 
regaining the efficiency or the uh, fluidity of the the market, treating the market as like an organism with like healthy, like a healthy nervous system or a healthy, healthy um, vascular system. Making sure that all the different processes and all the different <laughs> components are functioning, health, are healthily functioning. Not everything's about an edge. Not everything's about taking advantage. Not everything's about cutting corners. Something it, sometimes it's about servicing your customers and taking pride in your work. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. I don't know why it's playing out in all these like evenings and sunsets and um, and uh, and like Venetian blinds, but <laughs> well, you know, whatever it makes the Tommy happy, giving a little bit of a noir feeling to it. It's a beautiful vision for Japan. I'm at the verge of tears, really. It's just so nice to see. I don't know. Things that aren't just so fucking corrupt. <laughs> this gives me the same kind of feeling in a weird way that, that like Ghibli films do. Like Ghibli films are very, very kind of focused on like small battles and about like chores and work and about doing things day to day and affecting change through small internal changes. And this, this I think runs a similar kind of uh, philosophy. あしたからヤスウリ大魔王の方でお世話になるつもりです。しかし私は先日ヤスウリ大魔王の社長にお会いをしてこの私についてくるものに関してはすべてヤスウリ大魔王の方で面倒を見ていただきたい。Sometimes <sighs> workers don't know what's best for them. 今の我々の目から見ればあんなもん。Oh god. Such an indictment. All we clamor for is cheap, 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 cheap to fill the void in our lives. And once all of us are once all of us are clamoring for cheap, then they jack up the prices because they're the only game in town.私は一人でもこの店に残ります。ちゅ。私も残ります。私も残ります。ちゅ。いや、ボーイ。いや、みちろ。僕も残ります。みちゃ。みちゃ。ありがとう。何十億売ろうが。何店舗あろうがあんな同性もない生活売り場しか作れんようなスーパーで働くなんていやボーイ死んでも嫌ですこれ。really。really。これ。あ、good この奥津どもに魚が扱いかけたとことん叩き込んでビューティフルありがとうビューティフルビューティフルビューティフルビューティフルありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありがとうありが
いよ女が閉じ込められているんだ早くしないと凍ってしまう What the heck is that? Is that a traveling kabuki truck? <laughs> It's like the second act of The Dark Knight. Just as thrilling. <laughs> I can't get over how Dark Knight ish it actually is. I, I feel like you need a thematic resolution over a explosive resolution. It's, oh, wow,、uh, this is like a fun way to end the movie. I don't think it's like necessarily as thematically tight as everything else has happened. Right into her ear. We had to rub up against each other, nude to stay warm. Oh, did they actually? It's a beautiful sentiment. And like It's a Wonderful World, it's not really about, um, <laughs> it's a wonderful world. And like It's a Wonderful Life, it's not really about, um, Beating the bad guys, about making sure that they have their comeuppance.、Uh, value galore will never be destroyed.、Uh, come bargains galore will never, won't never, will be destroyed come New Year's. It's about like having success in your own, in your own business. That was wonderful. A, a vision of a, of a society that cares more about. Servicing people, about giving、um, fresh experience, not, not cheating people.、Um, yeah, utopian vision. <laughs> I don't really know what to say.、Uh, this is probably、uh, like、one of the most optimistic movies as I've probably featured on this channel, like this and,、uh, this, this and Giant, basically. <laughs> this was actually made in an interesting time in Japanese history, in Japanese development in the 90s. The,、um, the country was. On the verge of an economic downturn and what would later be called the lost decade.、Um, and there were kind of like、um, competing economic factors at play of、uh, land development deals that had kind of soured or, or turned, shifting markets in the world stage, and also re revelations of a lot of corruption behind a lot of Japanese money. and、uh, Uh, intentional inflation,、uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. But、uh, as a result, there was a lot of kind of distrust in Japanese corporatism, Japanese growth and development economy. And I think this movie provides a lens of like、uh, a past Japan or perhaps a Japan of the future that isn't so reliant on economic growth, that isn't so reliant on quarterly returns, but instead a vision of Japan that focuses on service, service servicing. Individuals servicing other people, really taking into account the wants and desires of the Japanese housewife, and by servicing them, by、um, recognizing the humanity of your customer, finding humanity in yourself, and pride in your work.、Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's an expansive. Idea on human relations encompassed in a very small story about an old mom and pop kind of supermarket. And it's, it's a lovely work. Beautiful, beautiful performance by, by Natsuko,、uh, by Nobuko Miyamoto. Obviously, she spearheaded this. She is Itami's muse or was Itami's muse.、Uh, funeral is、uh, available on the、uh, In the Criterion Collection, that's Itami's debut work. He made his first feature length film at the age of 50, and look at all the success he had afterwards. It's, a, it's a, truly a success story. Like him and、uh, him and Vittorio De Sica, just a、uh, uh, couple of Chad actors turning into Chad directors in the 
the twilight of their careers. You love to see it. That was Supermarket Woman. Give it a watch. It's tremendous, tremendous work. In the meantime, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies. I can't believe this was like a year before Cure. What an interesting couple of years in Japanese cinema. <laughs>